with two wedding dresses to pay for. We're hoping to find quite a bit of cash in the attic in an hour on BBC One. Right now, some very much needed business advice. Meat is an integral part of the UK diet, accounting for 25% of our household food expenses. That's over £11 billion each year. But cutting it in the meat trade is tough, and T&G Butchers isn't carving up a feast. Some weeks we do get a wage, some weeks we don't get a wage. Um, we just about cover our bills at the moment, but we still need money to live on. Owner Graham Williams may want his business to do well, but at the moment his joint is a recipe for disaster. We took over the business two years ago now and it was a struggle at first and we started to build up trade and we're getting the trust of the customers back until last year when the post office closed which has taken a lot of people away from the area. They can't just travel up just to see me. Graham might offer his customers a few choice cuts but unless the business starts making more money it could be ready for the chop. If, if things don't improve we're just going to go deeper and deeper into the red and that's the last thing we want with a family. But help is at hand. We've called in two prime business experts to turn this place around. But the question is whether you're going to be available on that day. Straight talking Kevin Gould and Margot Grimshaw. So, so we've got the contract. Oh, that's magic. Full of ideas, they're sure to beef up this business and make mincemeat of the competition. We are very desperate. We've given the shops now. We've given the shop now six months maximum. If if it hasn't improved by then, then we are going to have to look at selling the shop. Our experts won't make any bones about telling it like it is. Determined to stake a claim on Graham's future, their wealth of experience will have TNG butchers sizzling with the best. <laughs> TNG Family Butchers has been tending to the taste buds of the meat lovers of Erdington for two years. A Londoner by origin, Graham moved up to the Midlands in search of a better way of life. But the streets here aren't exactly paved with gold. Competition is tough wherever you set up stalls, and carving out a career as a butcher can be problematic. Unknown to Graham, the hidden mind your own business cameras have been observing this lean business. Are our business experts about to take this lamb to the slaughter? Oh, Margo, what do you um, think of the outside of that? That doesn't look very smart, does it? No, I do think butchers should be definite, because butchers, to me, are like sweet shops. If all the meat's laid out really well, it's very tempting. It doesn't look like he absolutely knows what he's doing. Well, he's trying, probably trying hard. Mm. You know, it's very difficult, isn't it, if you're struggling a bit. You try all sorts of things. And all that fruit and veg, I don't think that's uh, helping him. I think if you're going to do add-on sales, there should be something special and look tempting, not just like you've thrown them in the window hoping somebody's going to bob in. It looks like an afterthought bolted onto the mm. front of the shop rather than this is something definitely specific. what we're doing. You well. don't want those star signs. They went out in the mid-90s, I think, didn't mm. they? Nice looking bloke, isn't he? Looks looks like he might be interested. Is he your type? No. Well, you've got no beef with him? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to have a look at his cutlets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like those plastic bags. They look cheap. No, they look And actually, bit... why would you have them on display? Well, he's probably filling gaps, is he? What, what do you feel about those eggs being open on the counter? Like no, I don't that? think they should be, because I think eggs are now, you know, you get graded eggs and all that sort of thing. I think they want to be a bit more specific. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I see the impression. The impression oh, is he's looking there, through fresh. the window. I think he's looking for customers. I think perhaps we should try and get him some deal. I think he needs some help. I think he does. I think he needs some customers. Come on, let's, let's give him on. a... Let's go and beef up his business. <laughs> <laughs> Our gurus are here to save Graham's bacon by paying him a surprise visit. Their tried and tested ideas should leave his business as fit as a butcher's dog. Stop what you're doing, Graham. I'm Kevin Gould. Hello. I'm Margot Grimshaw. And we're Hello. from the Mind Your Own Business team. Now, we're here to sort your business out. I'm going to take you off to business boot camp. Do you know what a business boot camp is? No, no. It's going to inspire and excite you about your business. And I'm going to stay here and see if we can sort this out while you go. Right, right, right. I'm okay. going to take Graham away now. Yes, yes. And we'll see you later. <laughs> Come on, Graham, chop, chop. <laughs> right. So, where is this business going so wrong? The shop front looks messy and confusing to the eye. Inside, there's a lack of a strong and uniform identity. 
Despite working hard, Graham hasn't built up a regular customer base that will generate stable income. And as Kevin whisks Graham away to business boot camp, Margo's about to give this place a good grilling. I love butcher shops because when you're looking at them, you're thinking of all the nice meals you might make. But the one thing about this shop is it's a bit too cluttered. You know, really, the main object of this window is to sell meat. And he should be just doing that. Not all this clutter. Look at it up here. He can put all those somewhere else. I would like to see more emphasis on the different types of meat and the different cuts of meat and probably lift this up slightly so that there's a slant so people outside can really see the meat. You can't at the moment. This really aggravates me. What should be an asset to his business is actually making it a detriment because this should be saying to his customers, well, now you've bought the meat, buy the vegetables, but it isn't, it's just an hodgepodge. And look at this. Sellotape on the casters and this. Looks a bit funeral, reminds me of a graveyard. No, I don't like that. I think this needs to be something specialist, something really caring and concerned about his food and vegetables. Not like this, just a throwaway. That's what it is. As you can see, this used to be a post office, and this is happening up and down the country. Post offices are closing, and it's having a devastating effect on small businesses in parades like this. People came for pensions, stamps, all sorts of things, and now look what's happening. I bet the trade on this little shop fell considerably when this post office closed. I've been looking around here, and there's a lot of new buildings, new houses. Just look at these across the road here. And Graham, somehow or other, has got to get them over this road and into his shop. He's got to recoup the money that the post office has lost. And these people, I think, are a source of it. They'll all be tempted, like we all are, with supermarkets and one-stop shopping. But he has a good product, and he's got to convince them of it. After all, they are on his doorstep. And just in time for lesson one, Kevin and Graham are on the doorstep of today's business boot camp. Here we are, beautiful, leafy. What's the village of Ombersley? It's, it's a lovely little place, it's gorgeous. We've got the church across the road, we've got leaves, we've got trees, we've got Mercedes, we've got four-wheel drives, and now we've also got TH Checkets, the butchers, established 1902. Give me your impressions of this place. It's, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning. Well, a very promising start. <laughs> For over a hundred years, the name of Checkets has been synonymous with the very best of British meat. Positioned in the picture-perfect village of Ombersley in Worcestershire, this butcher's was founded in 1902 by Thomas Checkets. It's now run by two of his grandchildren, Tony and Phil. Well, isn't this marvellous? And there is the man himself. Hello, Phil. Hello. How nice How to see you. How nice to see you. How are you? And let me, I'm very well, thank you. Let me introduce you to Graham Williams, a butcher like yourself. Oh, Graham. Very pleased to meet you. Tell us about your business. It looks fantastic when you <laughs> thank walk in. Well, we're very proud of the business and it was founded on quality and uh, we've tried to keep that quality all through. So best quality British meat, good service, good hygiene, lots of new ideas, and, uh, but th those are, are the key things. Who's the most important person in well, your business? it's got to be the customers, because <laughs> uh, if you don't have customers and keep them happy, then uh, you'll get nowhere. I'm really interested by the fact that you only serve British meat. And I think you do too, don't you, Graham? Yes, now and again we do Scotch beef as well. Yeah, what are the Scotch beef? I mean, basically British. Yeah. Um, that, that's what we stick to, um, because it, you, you know it, it's good quality. And that actually differentiates you from the supermarkets who serve often imported meat. Yes, well, they, they do, and you don't know quite where it comes from. And, uh, and we, we always say where everything comes from. You can see the quality. Um, like the sirloin steak here, a little bit of marbling in there. Um, it's, it's freshly cut, it, it, it's boned out by ourselves, and that is the sort of thing we're looking for. It strikes me that when you come in the store, it feels appetising. Yes, well, th that, uh, we, we try and do that. We try and uh, make it look nice and, um, and keep everything sort of clean and fresh so it smells nice. There's very often cooking going on here. You get nice cooking smells and, uh, and make, it, make it pleasant and make it a nice experience for the customer to come in and, and enjoy the shopping here. Here we have quite a selection of products, uh, again, homemade 
product. I really like the curry sauce because to me that's a link sale. <laughs> you can sell a piece of meat and you can sell the sauce to go with it. Yeah. Again, it has to be good quality. People expect them to be good if we sell them. We've got uh, freezer items here. We do all our homemade beef burgers. We do packs lamb and mint burgers, kebabs. These are all things you know people can pick up and just put in their freezer. It's very convenient. But what does our business scholar make of it all? I love the variety. There's there's always something different. Um, it's not just your basic pork, lamb and beef. It's There's so much more variety. You don't have to eat the same thing every day, day in, day out sort of thing. No. I mean, you probably do a lot of the same things as we do, really. It, yeah. It's just sort of working on it and uh, just enhancing it a bit and uh, sort of just um, doing a bit more um, trying to get something a bit more interesting for the customers. When you come in here, Graham, the eyes led to lots of interesting and exciting things, all of which are about making money and keeping the customer happy. Yeah. Can I remind you, when you walk into your store, what you'd see? Carrier bags. And that's the difference I'm trying to explain to you. Yeah. You can't buy a carrier bag but you can buy a joint of meat. Yeah. <laughs> You're not selling these, and that's not the impression you really want to give of your store. Don't look so upset, Graham. After all, this is business boot camp, and sometimes the truth can be tough to swallow. But it's an important lesson to learn, and the look of your business will affect the way people perceive the quality of your product. If you offer locally grown or sourced stock, tell your customer. Make a feature of the fact. Locals will relate to it, and it makes you stand out from the crowd. Meanwhile, back at Graham's own shop, work has begun in earnest on the surprise transformation, and Margot is boning up on why this place isn't cutting it with the locals. I think we need a lot more things in there. It's just a little bit basic sometimes. You go to a butcher shop to get one item, don't yeah. you? Your meat. Yeah. You go, you go, to, and then you go to your greengrocers to get your greengrocers. Yeah. Those days seem seem to be numbered. It's easier to go to one place. You're not to get careful. Everything. You're gonna have me crying. I know. But not everyone succumbs to Margot's charms. Lower down the price and put some signs outside. Signs outside? Yeah. You think that yeah. would be important? Yeah, yeah. I don't think he can do a lot more because the place is a bit smaller. What do you think he could do to the front? Or... Do with brightening the shop up so yeah. it catches your attention. Maybe a bit more choice. Than a bit more choice, yeah. yeah. So it's on with the work. While back at boot camp, the conversation moves on to the subject of marketing. But whatever will Graham make of another less than choice reminder from his shop? Marketing your business is really important, particularly if you're proud of what you're doing. People have different ways of doing this, but I wonder whether this rings a bell at all. You've made it a bit more tattier, huh? <laughs> Phil, this is all well and good, but how do you market your business? Well, a bit differently. That's a standard British meat poster that we might have used years ago. But um, our marketing started really in the early 90s. We have about 1,300 uh, customers' names on our database. Um, we sent out a survey form to all of those, and we had about 260 back. Which That's amazing. We were That's amazed, yes. That's a huge, huge response, relatively speaking. Yeah, and it shows the interest in the business and, and the support and the loyalty of the customers. We've learned a lot from it. How do you communicate with your customers? I always ask if everything they've had's been okay. If, if there's anything they can think of that I don't do, to let me know all the time. But it's all word of mouth. It's, there's nothing actually printed down or anything to say that. It's not just about asking the customer if everything's okay. I think what you have to do is to ask them how more you can help them. Yeah. Say, what else could I be doing to help you? What else are you looking for that I could do for you? That way they can help you to help yeah. them. And people like that. Always remember the old adage, the customer is king. Continual customer evaluation is just as important as telling them what you do and how you do it. Send them a newsletter, keep in touch regularly. Always research your market to ensure that what you provide is what people really want. Remember, tastes and trends can change over time, so tailor your product accordingly. 
back at TNG Family Butchers, the place is definitely beginning to look better. But Margot has made an unusual discovery underneath the counter. Just look what I found under here. A microwave. That's a golden opportunity missed. He should have that out here, and then when customers come in, it could offer a hot meat pie or a hot sausage roll. And when people come in for a service like that, who knows what else they might buy. The idea is to maximise every opportunity, to use every bit of equipment you've got. A small shop like this, you don't have to let up for a minute. You've got to keep pushing. But Graham is trying. This shelf proves to me that Graham's trying hard to sell his customers add-ons with the purchases of meat. But they're very sort of stereotype and ordinary, and I think he could sort of expand it if he did more specialised sauces and marinades so that people would think, oh, I couldn't get those in the supermarket, but I can get them at Graham's, and that's really the sort of customer he wants to generate. Back at Business Boot Camp, temperatures have started to rise as the conversation moves on to hot snacks. We started this when we refitted the shop about two and a half years ago. Um, we weren't sure whether it was the right thing to do, so we, we looked at other shops. We start with breakfast in the morning, hey. bacon and sausage baps, uh, yeah. complete menu, black pudding if you want it, uh, tea or coffee. And then through the day, we will do things like hot pies for lunch, spit roast chickens, roast of the day. Today, it's, it's roast pork uh, with stuffing. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, 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 really it's good idea. Nice bit of crackling on there as well. Since we've been doing it, the sales of the pies, these um, steak and kidney pies and that sort of thing, um, once people have tried them hot, uh, they also buy them cold for the That's freezer great. or for the fridge. That's a really virtuous cycle. And actually, out of only a metre of yeah. shelf space... Yeah. Yeah. And also a good spin-off to it is the fact that people will come and they will buy a bat for breakfast. Uh, they will be impressed by the sausage and bacon. They won't buy anything else, but they will come back another day. Would you consider doing hot food in your shop? I would, yeah. Do you um, have the means to do hot food in your shop? We haven't got a lot of room in our shop, no. Apart from the room, do you have the equipment to do hot food in your shop? Um, we have microwaves, but it's, ah. it's, it's not the same as... Well, I'll tell you what you could do, do it. the way we started, with just a rotisserie. Uh, that's actually outside. Um, but in the rotisserie, you can cook chickens. Um, yep. They sell at 2 99 which is a good price. Um, and, and again, it is a draw. The, the customers um, will come for the hot chickens and then they'll buy other things. We already have you, a rotisserie. Yeah. yeah, you have. Well, well yeah. that's it. I mean, you, you can cook other things in there. You can get trays in there. You can cook sausages in there and things like that. I've got a chip shop three doors down. Uh, yeah, well, well <laughs> there we are. But, uh, I mean, your pies will possibly be better. I mean, the sausage might yeah. be better. And, uh, exactly. Um, so you, you'll probably be putting better stuff out than they are. So it's absolutely fine to get your inspiration from other places and it's also fine to compete with people on the grounds that if you can make a better pie than your competitor can, yep. people will come and get their pies from you. It's as simple as that. Plenty of food for thought there, Graham. And don't be deterred by competition. TNG Family Butchers has all the right ingredients to be a soaring success. And with a little artwork taking shape at the shop, the transformation is really underway. Margot, for one, is pleased with the way things are coming together. The red and white bags, you remember those, and the blue and white ones? Well, they were very colourful, but they didn't say anything. Now, this says it all. It says what is selling, how much it is, and what's more, it can be changed regularly. I think that's a very colourful statement. We displayed these fresh farm eggs a lot better, a lot more effectively than before. They were just dumped on the counter and I didn't like that one little bit. The baskets to add a little touch of the rural so we know where the eggs come from. And we've replaced those fluorescent signs, which I didn't like at all, with these gorgeous easels. But there's no easing up for Kevin and Graham at Business Boot Camp. There's still plenty to learn, and next on the agenda, it's all about getting to grips with the ups and downs of the butcher's life. All businesses have peaks and troughs. Now, I know that Christmas time and the winter are peak times for butchers. What happens in the summer? Well, that's true. I mean, generally the trade has always been better in the winter and that was until the barbecues came along and now we find the summer can be really good trade. We do all the usual sausages, lamb chops and all that sort of thing, but we also do these oil-based uh, 
coatings. So these are uh, value-added products. Anyway. Value-added, yeah. but it's very good for the meat. Um, being oil-based, uh, it, it marinades the products. So things like ribeye steaks, which, um, okay, they're, they're a nice flavour, but uh, with, a, with a nice sauce on it, um, they, they can be really tasty and interesting. Okay, well, I can say that these smell really good. Now, I know you, Graham, yeah. do use marinades. Yes, I know that you do have barbecue offerings, but what are the type of marinades that you're using? I'm using the powder-based marinades at the moment. And what would you say? The differences, Phil, between the powered ones and the oil ones. Have you used the powder ones? We, we have done uh, in the past, but we've we've gone for these. They they are a bit more expensive. Um, you do have to add a bit more onto the price for these, but they are extremely good. Um, it, natural spices. It it is a more natural product, and and that's what we're all about. Um, do they also it, stop the meat from drying out, though? Well, uh, they do. Yes, um, that. Um, that is one of the faults with the, the powder-based ones. Yeah, it draw it out. Right? Yeah, it, it does. Um, so, uh, and you can also get weight loss with that. Um, whereas this is, is good for the meat. And it's all about making the most of the meat. If you're And over at Business Boot Camp, the last issue on the butcher's block is all about image and reputation. Phil, successful businesses understand that reputation is key. How have you built your reputation? Well, it's taken a long time. I mean, there's a lot of history here with the family business and uh, started with grandfather and he always having the best quality. My father did the same and uh, myself and my brother uh, have tried to go on in the same way. Graham, he's not been in business very long. You, you're still building up your business, but you can do it the same as we've done it. And, you know, some of the ideas that uh, we've hopefully given you, you can take on and... Uh, yeah, there's definitely some there. And, yeah. and I, w I would be confident that you can do a lot of the things that we've done. Well, I think it's been amazing what we've learnt from you today. <laughs> it's a tremendous you. business you've got. It's been a thrill to meet you, and thank you very much. Nice to meet you, Kevin. You uh, nice to meet you, Graham. Thank you, Phil. As Kevin and Graham prepare to head back to T&G Butchers, just time for some garnishing. Graham is still completely unaware of the surprise transformation awaiting him. You must be so excited. Yep, I'm really looking forward excited to it. excited myself. Blimey. Blimey is right. Tell me what you think about that. It's blinding, it really is. It really stands out better. What a difference. What a difference. With vegetables that are better organised and... Yeah, I can do a lot with that. <laughs> <laughs> I really can do a lot with that. You see the signage inside as well. Yeah, they're better than my felt-tip ones. They're more traditional, definitely. They stand out a lot better. Looks more like a butcher shop. A great butcher shop for a great butcher. Let's go inside and see what it's like in there. All right, come on, mate. Graham Williams, welcome to your new <laughs> business. Hello, Graham. Can you see we've got the red and white bowl, you know, the butcher's colours. There's some pictures here so that your customers can see what the food looks like when it's cooked. We've got away with your uh, football, the colours, you know, like your red, that. white, your blue, white. We've got your signs up there. You've got the signs up there, which you can change whenever you like. New signs here. 
All and right, stuff yeah. like that. And we've done your fruit and veg outside. You'll have noticed that, won't you? And the big yep. sign, the red and white out there. I think it's done great here. Margot, I love the fresh herbs. Yes. They make the place seem really alive and full of life. And I think you must try, you know, to encourage people, local people, the shopkeepers even, and the bookies. You, would, you know, you have potential customers in that bookies. Yes. I would sit, put little pamphlets and say, don't go home. Come in yeah, for your lunch, absolutely. because they'll nip out, you know, and all that, Karen. You could sell your pies. Well, do you know what, Margot? Yeah. I think our work here is very nearly done. Yes. But before we go, I think we should leave Graham with three golden rules. Go on. Rule number one, talk to your customers. Find out what they want from you. Evaluate what they're asking for and then give it to them. Yeah. And concentrate on the additional things to sell, like the hot food and, you know, the snacks and the pies, because I think you might find that very beneficial. And lastly, trust your expertise. You're a master craftsman. Specialise. Show confidence in what you do and people will flock to you. I think you'll have no problem. And we're going to wish you it. lots and lots of luck. See you later, yeah. mate. Thank you very much. Very good luck. Thank you. OK. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you So the all-important question is, away from the watchful eye of Kevin and Margot, has Graham really taken away their advice and has he beefed up his takings? We've made a few more changes, not major. Uh, the blackboards that you put up in our window, uh, we've actually put them on the front of the vegetable stand that you made for us. Uh, we, they, they stand out more. The customers come in and they absolutely love it. They, I think it's a lot more colourful, more welcoming. Um, yeah, they do like it. When we visited the other butcher shops, the varieties they had, the sausages and different types of meats and different types of kebabs and flavourings, it wasn't just your standard pork, beef and lamb, there was a lot of other stuff as well. We are steadily going to introduce them here. We're trying a few new lines, uh, more lines coming in all the time now, and they are getting popular. We've had a few more customers, uh, some new faces, uh, a few have popped back, uh, still waiting on a few more. Uh, there's customers, new customers coming in all the time. It, it is picking up, definitely. The experience has given me a bit more oomph now, so it, it's, it's got me going again. It's put a bit of pride back in what I was doing. We're not thinking of selling a shop anymore. Um, we're considering now looking at, at the future and what better stuff we can do for the customers. The man who left a £7 million IOU and the company that hires drunks and chances to persuade you to change your electricity supplier. All that and more from Seven.